Well, Ma Shiv Hashem. The, um, it comes from the Tehillim from Psalms 116. And it's part of what we call Hallel. Hallel is a, praise, uh, is a prayer that we say at special occasions on we, when we bless the new month, uh, any of the holidays of the Golem, Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. Uh, it's a praise to God, again, said by King David. Again, David, King David's life was not easy. And um, this, but he always had hope. And this is what the songs talks about. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to read you the translation to the song. A lot of the songs that I do are really, the words are repetitious. They're, they're repeated again. Not this song. This song again is Psalm, from, Psalm 116 from verses 12 through 19. And again, they tell us a great deal. So let's begin. So Ma Shiv means how shall I repay God for all his benefits towards me? God wants to know that we appreciate all that he does. Just we have a tendency of taking things for granted. Again, we as Jews, the word Yehuda is from the word Hoda, which means to say thank you. Again, Leah gave the name to her fourth son, Yehuda, to thank God because she thought she would only have three children. At best. After all, Yaakov Arvino, Abraham our, our, Jacob our father, knew that he would they knew that he would have twelve sons. He had four wives. They just figured every one of the wives would get three children, which was not the case. Leah was blessed that after she had the third child, now she had the fourth child, and she realized that she was blessed with more than her portion. And so she thanked God, Yehuda. And that name is stuck. We are called Jews, which is the Hebrew and English rendition of the word Yehuda. And all of what we are about is hakor satov, gratitude, saying thank you to God, to people, to everyone. Anytime anyone does you a favor or does something for you, we show gratitude. We say thank you. And this is what the, the sound begins with. Okay? How should I replay God? We want to know what's the way I should do it. Next verse tells us, I will raise the cup of salvation and call upon the name of God. What do you mean, raise the cup of salvation? And we know that wine in Judaism, we know that wine in Judaism has a very special place. It's interesting, why, why wine? Why a grape? It's a cute story. The only beverage that has its own blessing no matter what you drink, the, same, the blessing is a universal blessing of Shachon, the Ebed Roe, everything is created according to his will. But one thing, one beverage has a special blessing, and that's wine. Bore Priyagotha. Blessed is, again, the fruit of the, of the vine. Why, why that? So one reason, again, that we say is that the tree of knowledge was a grape. But more than that, there's a story that says that the apple, the pear, and the orange went to God and said, why, why does the grape have its own blessing? After all, we, we're bigger, we're sweeter, we give more juice. Why would you pick the grape to have its own special blessing? So small and inconsequential. And God smiled and said, but they grow in a cluster. There's unity with grapes. And that becomes the thing that God wants most of all. Again, that elusive butterfly that we're missing today. Something that we all need to have. Octus. Unity. And that's why the King David here says, I'll raise the cup of salvation. And we do that when we make Kiddush. And again, the wine was poured on the altar with every sacrifice. Again, so we lift our cup for that and we call out the name of God. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all people. That again, <clears throat> keeping your word is so important in Judaism. Um, your mouth. It's amazing what your mouth can do. We are called a medaber, one who speaks. With your mouth you can make something bread. If you say bread is as unkosher to me as a sacrifice. Well, guess what? You can no longer eat bread. You have the ability to even take something that's, that's permitted, positive, and turn it into something that's forbidden, a negative. So again, so when you open your mouth, everything that you say, whatever comes out, you need, you're, you're, you're culpable for it. And it says that precious is in the sight of 
the law of God is the death of his pious ones. God loves superstars. Those people that really make it their point to try to serve God to the best of their abilities. And they do it with a difficulty, yet they're, they're happy to do it because they have a, such a relationship with God Almighty. And then there's a, this verse 16. David says, O oh God, I truly am your servant. I am the servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed my bonds. According to tradition, David and Melech, when he was born, his mother, his father had divorced, his, had separated from his, from his mother. And unbeknownst to his father, she had entered the marital bed of, the, of his second wife. And David and Melech was born from that relationship. And Yishai, who was a tzaddik, didn't realize that, that David was his son, but he accepted him anyways. And David and Melech was an outcast. He was sent out in the field, and that's where he spent his time, not with his brothers. And what he says here, and that's why we make our blessings, he says, I am the servant, the son of your maidservant. When we ask for God to help us, when we make what's called the Misha Barak of someone sick, and they, they go up to the Torah, even though at the Torah we're called by our father's name, when it comes to salvation, then we're called by our mother's name. And that's what David says here, and that's where we get it from. I am the servant, the son of your maidservant. It's an interesting phenomenon. If you take the Hebrew alphabet, we know that Judaism follows the mother. If you take the, the name for mother, Aim, Aleph, Mem, and you take the next letter, after an Aleph comes a base, after a Mem comes a Nun, that spells the word Ben, child, son, that from a mother comes a child. And that's what Judaism follows, the mother. Continues in the psalm and it says, I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the, na the name of the Lord. Thanksgiving, you know, the, jet net, the secular world in America anyway celebrates it once, once a year. In fact, the holiday is coming up next week. We celebrate Thanksgiving every day. That's what King David is telling us. That I, the, they say that when the third temple will come, when Mashiach will come, that all sacrifices will stop. Because most of these sacrifices are connected to the holidays, going out of Egypt, getting a Torah. But not the sacrifice of what we call the carbon tota, a thank, thank you sacrifice, that a person would bring if he was saved from, from a very difficult, uh, life-threatening life situation called the carbon tota. That will never end. And in verse 18, it, can, it continues, I'll pay my vows to the Lord now and in the presence of all his people and in the end, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Yishalayim, hallelujah. Again, a prayer to that all of this should be done in the holy temple. That we know that Dov and Amal's greatest wish was to build the temple, which God did not allow him to do. It was his son Shlomo who built the temple. And, but God considered it. In fact, on the day that King David, pardon me, King, King Solomon, had finished the temple and wanted to dedicate it. The, the gates were locked. And he couldn't open them. And he asked to open them in all types of merit, but they wouldn't open. And finally he said, open the gates in the honor of King David. And the gates opened. David's house. That was his greatest wish. And that's why we sing this every time, whenever there's a holiday or a special occasion, again, in the synagogue. Again, Ma Shiv Hashem.
Thank you for listening. God bless and have a great week. Enjoy.